Navigating the Gaze, a survival guide for Medusa encounters. Welcome, brave souls and intrepid adventurers, to the ultimate survival guide you never knew you needed. Tips to survive Medusa. That's right, folks. We're diving headfirst into the snake-infested waters of mythology to tackle one of the most hair-raising challenges known to man and demigod alike. Grab your reflective sunglasses, prep your best running shoes, and for goodness sake, let's find a decent hairstylist, because we're about to get up close and personal with the queen of stone-cold stairs herself. You might be asking, why Medusa? Why now? Well, dear reader, in a world where staring at your phone too long can turn your brain to mush, what's a little adventure into the realm of petrification among friends? Plus, let's face it, with Medusa's unique, erm, um, hair situation, there's never been a better time to discuss the importance of a solid grooming routine. But fear not. This guide isn't just about avoiding a rocky end. It's about embracing the absurd, finding humor in the face of imminent doom, and maybe, just maybe, learning a thing or two about dealing with difficult personalities. Because if you can handle Medusa, Karen from accounting should be a breeze. So whether you stumbled upon this guide while wandering the ruins of ancient Greece, or you're just here for some mythologically infused laughs, you're in for a treat. With tips ranging from fashion advice that could save your life to why carrying a rooster might just be your ticket to survival, we've got you covered. Prepare to laugh, learn, and leap into the world of mythological survival tactics. Because if you can survive Medusa, really, what can't you handle? Welcome to Tips to Survive Medusa where turning to stone is a real possibility, and the only thing sharper than her gaze is our wit. Let's get started, shall we? So, you've found yourself in the unfortunate situation of having to deal with Medusa. Yes, that Medusa. The one with the hair that really gives bad hair day a whole new meaning. But before you start freaking out and googling how to survive mythical creature encounters, or is petrification covered by health insurance, Let's talk strategy. And by strategy, I mean mastering the art of not looking her in the eyes. Sounds simple, right? Oh, sweet summer child, if only. First things first. Medusa's gaze is like the world's worst laser pointer, and you're the cat. Make eye contact and boom, you're a decorative statue for her garden. So, the goal here is to not become the world's most unwilling participant in a staring contest. How? you ask. Well, think of it as avoiding spoilers for the season finale of your favorite show. You wouldn't just waltz into a forum without expecting to get spoiled, would you? Apply that same level of caution here. Now, navigating around without making eye contact might have you feeling a bit like you're back at your high school dance, trying not to lock eyes with your ex. Awkward, sure, but also doable. Practice walking around your house blindfolded. Bump into enough furniture, and you'll be a pro at moving without seeing in no time. Bonus points if you manage not to visit the ER for stitches. It's all about building those non-visual skills, baby. Let's say you accidentally catch a glimpse of snake hair. What do you do? Panic? Scream? Pee a little? While all valid responses, they're not exactly helpful. Instead, practice the fine art of sudden interest in your shoes. Medusa's about to come into view. Wow, would you look at that? I think my left shoelace is untied. Fascinating. Of course, there's always the option of wearing a blindfold and pretending you're in some sort of mythical version of Bird Box. But let's be real. Wandering around blindfolded might solve the eye contact issue. But it also significantly increases your chances of walking into a tree, falling into a pit, or, best case scenario, Walking in circles and looking like a lost contestant in a reality show challenge gone wrong. In conclusion, avoiding Medusa's stony gaze is part survival skill, part awkward social dance, and entirely a test of your ability to not look at something that every instinct tells you to look at. It's like the universe's cruelest don't press the red button scenario. But with these tips, and maybe a healthy dose of luck, You'll hopefully navigate your way through this without adding statue to your resume. Stay sharp, stay shoe-focused, and for goodness sake, watch where you're going. 
So, you've successfully avoided turning into a Renaissance sculpture by mastering the ancient art of not looking directly at things. Congratulations, by the way. But let's up the ante with a little tool I like to call the Medusa Avoider 3000. Others might call it a mirror, but that's just because they lack imagination. Now, wielding a mirror as your primary weapon against a creature that could give the basilisk a run for its money in a staring contest might seem about as effective as bringing a rubber duck to a sword fight. But hear me out. There's method to the madness. And if Perseus could pull it off, so can you, my intrepid not-yet statue. First order of business. Find yourself a mirror. Not just any mirror, though. You want something portable, durable, and with the least amount of I stole this from my grandma's bathroom vibe. Think less handheld vanity mirror and more shield-sized I'm going into battle with a mythological monster kind of deal. Once you've got your Medusa Avoider 3000, it's time to practice. And by practice, I mean walking around like you're the love child of a paranoid spy and a particularly skittish crab. It's all about angles, baby. You're aiming to catch glimpses of your surroundings in the mirror without ever exposing your delicate, easily petrified eyeballs to direct monster eye contact. Now, this is where things get a bit tricky. Because, let's face it, Navigating the world through a mirror is about as easy as texting your crush while drunk. It's possible, but there's a high chance of misinterpretation and injury. You'll bump into stuff. You might walk into a wall or two. But hey, a little bruising is better than a lifetime as a lawn ornament, right? Let's not forget the added bonus of carrying a mirror around. You're always selfie ready. Yes, even in the midst of a life or death struggle against ancient evil, there's always time for a quick pick. Just avoiding becoming part of Medusa's rock garden. Hashtag survivor. Hashtag blessed. It'll get all the likes, assuming you live to post it. In conclusion, the mirror tactic is your go-to move for navigating Medusa-infested waters. It's like a game of reverse peekaboo where the stakes are absurdly high, and the only prize is not spending eternity wondering if pigeons are using your head for target practice. So, polish that mirror. Practice your awkward sidestepping, and remember... In the battle against Medusa, reflection is key, both metaphorically and very, very literally. Alright, buckle up, fashionistas of the mythical survival realm, because we're about to dive headfirst into what might be the most crucial fashion advice of your life. Forget Milan Fashion Week. Surviving Medusa with style is where it's at. Enter the life-saving, trend-setting world of reflective clothing. Who knew that the secret to dodging a petrifying fate could be found in the same tech that keeps joggers from becoming roadkill? First off, let's address the neon elephant in the room. Reflective clothing? Really? Yes. My soon-to-be-not-statue friend. Really. We're not just trying to avoid becoming Medusa's next lawn decoration. We're aiming to do it while lighting up her cave like a disco ball at an 80s revival night. The goal here is to confuse, dazzle, and ultimately avoid being seen as a target. It's dazzle camouflage meets nightclub chic. Now, sourcing your reflective wardrobe might require a bit more effort than your usual shopping spree. You'll want to hit up those stores where the clothes scream, I'm here and I'm impossible to ignore. Think safety vests, reflective tape, shiny metallic fabrics, basically, Anything that can send a beam of light ricocheting off into Medusa's eyes if she so much as glances in your direction. But here's where it gets fun. Customization. Why settle for a standard issue reflective vest when you can bedazzle the hell out of it? Grab some glue, a handful of sequins, and maybe a bedazzler if you're feeling fancy, and go to town. Not only will you be crafting your very own Medusa-proof armor, but you'll also be solidifying your status as the most fashion-forward adventurer in mythological history. Let's not forget about accessorizing. Reflective belts, bracelets, even shoelaces can add that extra flair to your ensemble, making you a walking, talking disco ball of Medusa-repelling brilliance. And who knows? Maybe you'll start a trend. After all, nothing says I'm too fabulous to be stone, quite like blinding your adversaries with your fashion sense. In conclusion, when it comes to surviving an encounter with Medusa, it's not just about what you wear. It's about how you wear it. With the right reflective gear, you can turn a deadly showdown into a runway showdown. So, strut your stuff, dazzle with your brilliance, and remember, in the world of mythological creature survival,
being fashionably late and alive is always in vogue. Now, I know what you're thinking. In a guide about surviving Medusa, you're telling me to just stand still? Like, really still? Yes, my dear, soon to not be a statue friend, that's exactly what I'm saying. But this isn't your garden variety game of freeze tag. No. This is the ultimate mannequin challenge, where the stakes are higher than your uncle's blood pressure after a family holiday dinner. First things first, mastering the art of not moving. Sounds easy, right? Wrong. This isn't about holding your pose for a cool Instagram pic. This is about convincing Medusa you're already part of her stone decor collection. But how? You ask, trembling in your soon-to-be fashionable reflective gear. Simple. You become the world's best actor, and your role is inanimate object number three. Imagine you're a tree. No, a sexy tree, if that helps. You're in the forest, or, you know, a creepy-ass cave, minding your own tree business, when suddenly, Medusa slithers by. Your heart's racing, palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. But on the surface, you're as calm as a pot plant in a dentist's office. You channel every ounce of your being into not being. You're not a person. You're a piece of art, crafted by the gods themselves for this very moment. Now, for the breathing. You gotta breathe, right? Well, yes, but let's keep it discreet. Think ninja breathing. Inhale so gently that even the butterflies nearby are like, damn, that's some quiet breathing. Your goal is to not give yourself away with a gusty sigh or, heaven forbid, a sneeze. If you must sneeze, you better pray to all that is holy that it comes out as a gentle zephyr or something equally poetic. Let's talk strategy. You're standing there, heart pounding, and Medusa's doing her thing, turning unsuspecting critters into garden ornaments. Now's your chance to practice those mindfulness techniques you've been bragging about. Envision yourself somewhere calm, somewhere serene, anywhere but here, basically. Your mind is your sanctuary. Retreat into it, but for the love of Zeus, keep your body statue still. Finally, the exit strategy. So, you've nailed the not moving thing, Medusa's moved on, and you're not currently a rock formation. Congratulations, but you're not out of the woods yet, or the cave as it were. Slowly, and I mean glacially slow, begin to move. Think of yourself as a sloth on a very lazy day. Any sudden movements now, and you're back to square one. Potential lawn art. In closing, the stay still strategy is all about mind over matter. It's a test of will, a battle of nerves, and a damn good reason to start practicing your I'm a statue, don't mind me pose. Remember, in the high stakes world of avoiding petrification, sometimes the best move is no move at all. Buckle up, survivors of the stone gaze, because we're about to dive deep into one of history's lesser known but utterly brilliant Medusa defeating strategies. Operation Cockadoodle-Doo. That's right, folks. We're talking about enlisting the help of our feathered friend, the rooster. Before you start clucking in disbelief, let me remind you that in the grand, absurd theater of mythological creature combat, Sometimes the best solutions are the ones that make you go, wait, what? First off, let's address the giant feathery elephant in the room. Why on earth a rooster? Well, legend has it that the crow of a rooster can turn lesser gorgons to stone. Now, we're not saying Medusa is going to crumble at the first hint of a farmyard wake-up call, but in the absence of better options, like, say, a godly weapon or divine intervention, we're going with poultry power. Now. Sourcing your anti-Medusa rooster might be a bit tricky, especially if you're not a morning person. You'll want a rooster with a crow that commands attention. The kind that says, I'm here to kick ass and lay eggs, and I'm all out of eggs. Visit your local farm, and listen for the rooster with the most assertive cock a doodle -doo. That's your guy. Bribe him with promises of endless grain or the affection of many hens, whatever it takes to get him on your anti-Gorgon squad. Training your rooster is the next critical step. You can't just show up at Medusa's lair and expect him to perform on cue. 
Start your mornings together, bonding over coffee, you and corn, him, synchronizing your watches for that perfect dawn chorus. Consider it a team-building exercise. After all, you're about to go into battle together. Now, employing the rooster in the field requires tact. You can't just waltz into Medusa's lair, rooster in hand, and hope for the best. No, you need the element of surprise. Conceal your feathered friend in a tastefully decorated soundproof carrier. Something that says tactical, but also animal lover. When the moment is right, and Medusa's guard is down, perhaps while she's admiring her stone garden, that's when you unleash your secret weapon. Open the carrier, and let the dawn chorus ring. Let's talk escape plan, because, let's face it, whether the rooster gambit works or not, you're going to want to hightail it out of there faster than you can say poultry in motion. Use the moment of surprise to make your exit, ideally while Medusa is still processing the fact that her latest opponent brought a chicken to a snake fight. In conclusion, while bringing a rooster to battle Medusa might sound like the plot of a fever dream, we're living in a world where being turned to stone by a bad hair day is a legitimate concern. So, why not embrace the absurdity? At the very least, you'll have a story that will have everyone at your next dinner party questioning your sanity. And a rooster who's seen some shit. Remember, in the fight against mythological monsters, it's not the size of the rooster in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the rooster. And also, maybe, the element of surprise. If you thought bringing a rooster to a Gorgon fight was peak absurdity, hold on to your hats, because we're about to serenade some serpents. Yes, you read that right. It's time to face the dreaded snake hair of Medusa with nothing but your charm, and, ideally, a flute. Because why fight snakes with swords when you can woo them with music? Firstly, let's tackle the elephant in the room. No, you're not suddenly a snake charmer, and yes, this is as ridiculous as it sounds. But when you're trying to avoid becoming a permanent addition to Medusa's stone garden, you've got to get creative. And by creative, I mean pulling out all the stops, including pretending you're in a low-budget remake of The Jungle Book. Securing your instrument is step one. You might be tempted to go for something grandiose, like a harp or a lyre, but remember, subtlety is key. You're not trying to win Mythical Creatures Got Talent. You're trying to not die. A simple flute will do. Bonus points. If it's one you've crafted from bamboo in a fit of wilderness survival inspiration. Now, on to the serenade. If you've never played a flute before, fear not. The snakes are less concerned with your skill level, and more with the fact that you're not immediately trying to decapitate them. Think of it as soothing elevator music for potentially lethal hair accessories. Your goal here is distraction, not entertainment. When the moment of truth arrives, and you're standing there, flute in hand, Facing down a creature that's more serpent than woman? Remember, confidence is key. Blow into that flute like you're the Pied Piper of Hamlin, and those snakes are your loyal followers. Ignore the absurdity of the situation. Focus on the task at hand. Medusa's slithery entourage. Of course, this plan isn't without its risks. There's a fine line between charming and enraging, and these snakes have notoriously short fuses. If you see them start to hiss or coil, it might be time to pivot, either to a different tune or, more wisely, to the nearest exit. Remember, discretion is the better part of valor, especially when your audience can turn you into a statue. In conclusion, when faced with the prospect of dealing with Medusa, sometimes you've got to fight fire with fire, or in this case, snakes with flutes. It's a strategy as old as time, or at least as old as the first person to think, Maybe I can chill these snakes out with some smooth jazz. So, take a deep breath, pucker up, and play your heart out. Who knows? You might just find you have a knack for serpentine music therapy. And if not, well, at least you gave those snakes something to talk about for the next millennium. All right, folks. Grab your diffusers and your most mystic-looking bottles, because we're diving headfirst into the aromatic world of essential oils. Now, before you start thinking I've lost my marbles and suggest a lavender-scented pillow spray as a means to fend off one of mythology's most fearsome beings, hear me out. We're not just aiming to relax Medusa with a spa-like ambiance. We're going tactical with the stinkiest, most pungent oils known to humankind. 
Because if there's one thing that might just save your ass in a face-off with snake hair, it's making yourself as unappetizing as possible. First off, let's talk selection. While you might be tempted to reach for soothing scents like rosemary or eucalyptus, now's not the time to be the Martha Stewart of essential oils. No. You want the heavy hitters. Think garlic oil, onion extract, and the ever-potent durian essence. Yes, durian. The fruit so smelly, it's banned on public transport in some countries. If it can clear out a bus, it might just do the trick against Medusa. Now, application. This isn't a dab behind the ear situation. You're going for full coverage. Think of it as preparing for the world's worst blind date. You're not trying to attract. You're trying to repel. Slather that oil on like it's sunscreen, and you're about to cross the Sahara. Hair, clothes, possibly even a strategic squirt directly onto your shoes. Leave no surface unoiled. Of course, there's a fine line between offensive and biohazard. You want to make sure Medusa keeps her distance, not summon the EPA. Practice your blend ahead of time, testing it out on friends and family to gauge reactions. If you clear the room, you're on the right track. If you clear the block, dial it back a notch. Let's not forget the added bonus of your new, pungent aura, camouflage. In a world where smells can guide creatures just as much as sight, blending into the olfactory background can be your secret weapon. With the right mix of oils, you won't just be invisible to Medusa. You might just blend in with her own undoubtedly charming, snaky scent. In conclusion, when facing down Medusa, sometimes the best offense is a good offense. And by offense, I mean making yourself as offensively scented as humanly possible. It's not glamorous, and it certainly won't win you any popularity contests. But it just might keep you from becoming another piece in Medusa's rock garden. So, oil up, warriors. It's time to get stinky. Welcome to the darker, yet undeniably practical side of mythical creature survival, the buddy system. Or as I like to call it, how not to be the slowest runner in the group. Before you start calling me heartless, let's get one thing straight. We're dealing with Medusa here, not a leisurely jog in the park. When stone-cold stairs are on the line, you bet your ass it's every mortal for themselves. First up, choosing your buddy. Now, this isn't your average pick for a partner in a three-legged race. You want someone reliable, someone trustworthy, and, let's be brutally honest here, someone you can outrun. It sounds harsh, but when Medusa's turning folks into lawn ornaments, those moral high grounds get a bit muddy. Now, I'm not saying you should trip your buddy as you make your grand escape, though, in extreme circumstances, but a little accidental nudge away from the escape route, or a conveniently forgotten warning about a loose rock might just give you the head start you need. Remember, you don't have to be Usain Bolt. You just need to not be the slowest. Strategy is key here. Before you even get within hissing distance of Medusa's lair, have a chat with your buddy, discuss potential escape routes, agree on distraction tactics, and maybe avoid mentioning that part of the plan where you leave them behind as Gorgon bait. No need to worry them prematurely. In the heat of the moment, Communication is crucial. Develop a system of signals or code words to coordinate your movements. Something like, Eagle has landed could mean, Run like hell, she's looking this way. And Houston, we have a problem, translates to, Sorry, bud, you're on your own. But let's not forget the silver lining. If, by some unfortunate twist of fate, your buddy does end up a little more sedimentary than when they started, Think of the stories you'll have to tell. There I was, sprinting from a millennia-old monster, when poor Bob, well, he always said he wanted to be remembered. In conclusion, the buddy system in Medusa Evasion is a delicate balance of teamwork and tactical betrayal. It's about ensuring your survival while still giving a nod to the age-old adage of bros before... Nope, actually, just run. So... Pick your buddy wisely, plan your escape, and maybe work on those sprints. Because in the end, being a good friend is great, but not being stone is even better. All right, squad, gather round. We've sneaked, charmed, and fashionably blinded our way through Medusa's lair. But now it's time to talk about the grand finale. 
knowing when and how to make your glorious exit. Think of it as leaving an awkward family gathering, but instead of dodging questions about your love life, you're avoiding a gaze that could solidify your single status forever. First things first, recon. Just like you'd scope out the nearest exit at Aunt Gertrude's annual Why Aren't You Married Yet? bash. You need to know your escape routes in Medusa's hangout. This means identifying all doors, windows, and, if you're feeling particularly adventurous, skylights. Yes, I'm suggesting you might need to channel your inner action hero. No pressure. Now, let's talk timing. There's an art to leaving a party early without offending the host, and the same principles apply here. You don't want to bolt at the first sign of snake hair, but you also don't want to wait until Medusa starts her monologue about how lonely it is being a monster. That's your cue. The moment she gets sentimental, it's time to put those exit strategies into action. Your exit should be swift, silent, and smooth. Like ghosting from a Tinder date without the awkward goodbye. This might mean crab walking behind columns, army crawling under tables, or, if you've really got your escape game on point, a well-timed roll across the floor. Think less dignified retreat and more ninja vanish. Let's not forget distractions. Just as you might accidentally spill a drink to escape a conversation about your ex, consider what diversions you can create to aid your exit. A strategically placed mirror to catch the light. A sudden bout of snake-charming flute music. Or, if you're really committed, releasing that rooster from Chapter 5. Finally, remember that a good exit is one nobody notices until you're already updating your status to survived Medusa and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. If you've played your cards right, you'll be halfway home before anyone realizes you've left the building. Or cave, in this case. In conclusion, Knowing your exits is about blending the subtle art of party escape with the high stakes of mythological creature evasion. It requires preparation, timing, and a willingness to embrace the ridiculous. Because sometimes, survival isn't about being the hero. It's about being the one who knows when to bolt, preferably without turning into a decorative piece for Medusa's garden. So, you've tried everything from reflective fashion to snake charming, and yet, here you are, face to not face with Medusa, contemplating your next move. It's time for Plan Z, therapeutic conversation. Yes, you heard that right. When the chips are down and you're out of options, maybe all Medusa needs is a good vent session. I mean, have you seen her hair? If that doesn't scream I need to talk, I don't know what does. First off, let's set the scene. You're there, she's there, and it's awkward. You've avoided eye contact like it's your ex at a mutual friend's wedding, but now it's time to engage. Start with something neutral, like, so how's the whole turning people to stone thing working out for you? It's important to keep the tone light. We're going for empathetic bartender, not nosy therapist. Now, onto the hair. It's the elephant in the room, or the snakes in the room to be more precise. Approach this topic with the delicacy of a bomb disposal expert. I can't help but notice your unique hairstyle. Care to share your secret? This could go two ways. She opens up about her struggles, or you discover snakes can, in fact, hiss louder. Either way, you're making progress. Remember, Medusa wasn't always the stone-cold killer you see before you. She's got a backstory, and everyone loves to talk about themselves. Encourage her to share. What was it like, you know, before? Show genuine interest, nod sympathetically, and for the love of Zeus, suppress any urge to laugh or look horrified. This is her moment. Humor is a powerful tool. If you can make her laugh, you're halfway to not becoming decor. Crack a joke about how you tried using snakes as a hair accessory once, but could never get them to sit right. It's relatable content, right? Just be prepared to duck in case she doesn't share your sense of humor. Finally, if the conversation seems to be going well and you've bonded over hair care tips and the woes of immortality, it's time to gently broach the topic of not turning you into a statue. Something like, you know, I've really enjoyed our chat. Any chance we could continue it without the whole eternal petrification hanging over us? It's a long shot. But hey, you've already talked a mythical monster into opening up about her feelings. Anything's possible. In conclusion, 
When faced with the imminent threat of becoming a stone masterpiece, sometimes the best defense is a good chat. It's about connecting on a personal level, making them laugh, and maybe, just maybe, finding common ground amid the snake hair and petrifying glares. Who knows? You might just walk away with your life and a new friend. Or, at the very least, a great story for your next party. And there you have it, fearless navigators of the mythological minefield. We've reached the end of our serpentine journey through tips to survive Medusa. Who knew that evading a gaze could be so fraught with peril and yet so ripe with comedic gold? From reflective fashion statements to strategic rooster employment, we've covered the gamut of survival tactics that are as absurd as they are essential. But let's be real for a moment. This wasn't just about dodging petrification or mastering the art of not looking like a snack, for once, literally. No, this guide was about finding humor in the face of fear, about the importance of preparation, and, oddly enough, about building connections. Even if they're with creatures who'd rather turn you into a garden statue than chat about hair care products. As we part ways, remember that while you might not encounter Medusa on your morning jog, and if you do, please reconsider your jogging route. The world is full of challenges that might seem as insurmountable as staring down a Gorgon. But with a bit of wit, a dash of courage, and a healthy respect for the absurd, there's nothing you can't face. So, to all our readers, whether you came for the myths or stayed for the laughs, thank you for joining us on this wild ride. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, not just to support the channel, but to ensure you're always prepared whether you're facing down mythical monsters or just the monsters of the mundane. And remember, the next time you find yourself in a tricky situation, ask yourself, what would I do if this were a Medusa moment? Chances are, the answer will not only see you through, but might just leave you with a story worth telling. Thanks for sticking with us. Until next time, keep your mirrors handy, your roosters closer, and as always, keep your sense of humor about you. Who knows what mythical challenge we'll tackle next. Until then, have an amazing day, and may your adventures be many and your stone statues few.